If something looks too good to be true, it'll eventually be banned by the government. A few days ago, Italy banned DeepSeek outright and removed it from the app stores, followed by bans within government agencies in the United States, Australia, and Taiwan. And to make matters worse, this U.S. senator wants to pass a law that bans all Chinese AI and make the punishment for using it up to 20 years in prison. Meanwhile, OpenAI has been scrambling to Zuckerberg features from its competitors in a last-ditch effort to remain at the forefront of the AI zeitgeist. They just dropped the new O3 Mini model as well as a version that can get high but not only that, they dropped a bonus feature for the $200 Pro users called Deep Research, an interesting name choice that not only tries to steal the thunder from DeepSeek by literally copying the UI exactly, but most people don't even realize that Google Gemini also released a feature with the exact same name that does the exact same thing months ago. But luckily, open source is continuing to win, and it only took developers 12 hours to speedrun an open source version of OpenAI's Deep Research. If you blinked at all in the last few days, you likely missed some crazy new tech, and in today's video, we'll break it all down. It is February 4th, 2025, and you're watching The Code Report. Sam Altman just did a Reddit AMA and made a shocking statement by saying we've been on the wrong side of history and need to figure out a different open source strategy. What they should do is create a new company called Closed AI where they open source everything, but in all likelihood it's just corporate damage control talk. Because a year ago OpenAI could do no wrong, but after going for profit and losing to DeepSeek, they're like Stella trying to get her groove back. But they did release the new O3 models, not to be confused with O1 or 4O, and O3 Mini is legitimately impressive. It's a fast, cheap, and free reasoning model that's on par with DeepSeek. Seek R1, and beats it on many benchmarks. And even the pores can use it on the ChatGPT free plan. For the last few days, the internet has been debating which one is better, but there's no definitive answer on which one has the best vibes. I put them to the test this weekend myself, along with Claude Sonnet, by having them build a 2D game in Godot, which is an awesome game engine with its own language called GD Script. And I even had them build a 2D pixel art. When it comes to art, Claude was the best, with DeepSeek in second, and O3 last. But to be honest, all three of them sucked pretty bad. And personally, I refuse to call anything a true AGI until it can code a GTA 7 caliber game. But when it comes to the actual game code, well, I got similar results. Claude was still the most useful, followed by DeepSeek and then O3. The problem with DeepSeek, though, is that the website was constantly overloaded, and now the Chinese have my game idea. But I think a lot of people will disagree with me putting O3 last year. On the internet, there are many reports of O3 outperforming DeepSeek by a wide margin, and ultimately, it just comes down to choosing the right weapon to murder your code with. Despite OpenAI's comeback, the DeepSeek founder has become a national hero in China, and brought great honor to his hometown in Guangdong. The other big OpenAI feature, though, is deep research. Like I mentioned, Google Gemini also has this feature, and to be honest, it's pretty awesome. Instead of just hallucinating slop from the base model, it'll go out and find a bunch of slop from the internet to give you a more accurate response. And that could be incredibly useful if you're doing something like a competitor analysis to start a business, or if you're a lawyer with a huge case file, or a doctor trying to analyze a confusing medical history. In fact, my doctor subscribes to ChatGPT Pro, and after checking out this mole on my arm, he recommends that we amputate my head, but unfortunately, my lawyer also uses ChatGPT Pro, and he just got me 10 years in prison for a parking ticket. And Sam Altman, who's definitely not known to overpromise and underdeliver, is said that deep research can do a single digit percentage of all economically viable jobs in the world, which is big if true, and would make OpenAI the most valuable company in the world if it's the one supplying the AI for that. But if you don't want to be on the wrong side of history like Sam Altman, you should use open source tech to get your news, like Daily.dev, the sponsor of today's video. It's an entirely free tool tool that curates all the best content for programmers on the internet. Not only is it loved by over a million developers, but you can find its entire application suite on GitHub. The best way to experience it is with their browser extension, or the iOS and Android apps on mobile. Most importantly though, it's a place where developers can suffer and learn together. A place to discover the latest trends in technology and discuss them with like-minded professionals. And they just launched a new Plus subscription, with features like Clickbait Shield and a bunch of other perks. And for the next 72 hours, you can get a bonus and the first month free by entering the code FIRESHIP. Use the link below to begin some healthy suffering on daily.dev. This has been The Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.